Okay, so I tried. I really did. I tried to do a YouTube live, but YouTube has succeeded in making it way too much of a pain in the butt. Um, I couldn't tell whether it was actually live or not. There was a blue button that said go live, and I ended up with like a dozen attempted live videos, so I'm in the process of deleting all of those. Anyway, um, it was really just supposed to be testing the go live, but the test failed, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, what I was going to do for the live video, I would do right now, which is uh, I've been mastering an album today for artist Bette Williams. And uh, it's basically uh, she and her partner Elle um, made this uh, stripped down kind of acoustic -y album you know, uh, insofar as it's, you know, two women working together singing, it's a little indigo girlsy, but they're uh, her, their sound is much bluesier, um, more Amer Americana, I guess. And um, Bette came here and we to mix the album. So we did that first uh, on the API. And uh, it was it was fun. It was the tracks were a mix, like half the songs were recorded around a single microphone, which was interesting in its own right. And uh, and then the other half were, were multi-tracked, uh, which obviously gave us a lot more flexibility. The, the ones that were around the single microphone, um, you know, it's like the vocal was probably not as loud as we would have liked, but it's one of those situations where I think if that were the only when you're doing it, it probably when they were doing it, it probably sounded fine. I wasn't involved in the recording end of that, but uh, the minute you compare it to where you would put the vocal on a multi-track um, session, you realize it's not anywhere as loud as you would like it to be. But um, so it was a uh, there was a mastering challenge in that, and and getting those two uh, types of uh, files uh, to sit next to each other. So as you can see, I have this lined up in WaveLab, Steinberg WaveLab, which is a DAW that is purpose built, built for mastering. And uh, WaveLab has the capability to do uh, external analog inserts, uh, but we don't need to in this case because we mixed it here. And so in the mixing process, we already ran through you know, what I would normally use for uh, analog mastering, which you know, would be, and if you've seen my other videos, you already know this, it would be this DW Fern VT7 uh, tube compressor. Uh, really amazing piece. Everything DW Fern makes is incredible. That, uh, that one in particular is really, really nice. Um, I'll generally run uh tracks well when i'm mixing it'll definitely go through the center channel which has the api 527 compressors and it, as opposed to just getting those in 500 series format on the board on the api box console uh there's actually a link button so you can do true stereo with them which is really nice um so in the mixing process it would hit that and then go through the insert on the main, on the mix bus. And uh, the order I was doing was first hitting the Fern compressor and then hitting the Chandler curve bender equalizer. And, you know, I, I would probably do that order anyway, but um, Chandler's, uh, the curve bender is a little weird. It's a little kind of a finicky piece. Uh, when I first got it, I mean, everybody kind of runs into, into this when they first get it, which is um, something about its input impedance is not comfortable coming. Um, actually, it's not the input, it's the output impedance. It's something about it's not comfortable feeding into other gear, you know? So like when I've put it ahead of uh, certain compressors and, and other equipment uh, what ends up happening is you start you get distortion and not necessarily not good distortion in very audible ranges and like mid-range um, and certain and certainly high frequency as well and you know if you talk to Chandler about it they will simply tell you oh it has to go last in the chain 
and that's that's a weird uh, thing I think to say about uh, a big piece of gear like that. However, the fact is, uh, I love it. it. You know, it's incredible sounding. It's a really unique piece. Um, you know, it, it's got germanium circuits, and and it, it really, um, you know, there's really nothing quite like it. And it's also a very flexible piece too. So, uh, you know, just um, keeping it last. You know, it's like okay, fine if that's the way it has to be. And frankly, you know, EQing after compression isn't, you know, isn't so bad anyway. It's it's pr probably what I would want to do anyway. Um, I think the place where uh, I have to sacrifice the most for that is that if it worked, I would probably put uh, these Paltec EQs after it, and because of that weird situation, if I use those on the mix bus i do have to put them ahead of that you know that eq but um so anyway uh that's uh that's my that's my mastering chain it's also my mix bus chain you know i mean if somebody were to send me tracks to master um that hadn't already been through analog processing that's what it would be here um but uh so we you know, again, all of these tracks already went through all of that, so I'm mastering in the box. And, um, you know, once you get all your songs in to WaveLab, WaveLab uh, has uh, a wizard. You know, basically, uh, if you go up and click on CD up here, you know, whether you're making a CD or not, I mean... Uh, yeah, then you can go to uh, the CD wizard here. And this is where it will auto generate start marks and end marks on all the tracks. And so before you do this, I should say, uh, you wanna, what's called top and tail. You want you wanna, you know, um, drag in your, uh, your sound files so that uh, they, they have exactly the start and the end that you want and any little fades in and out. You want to get that all done first before you do this. But if you go here, um, I might have mentioned this in my other mastering video, uh, there's this one particular parameter uh, which is silence after first track start mark. Now that defaults to a much lower setting. Uh, I, I forgot what it actually defaults to, like 30 or something like that. I found through trial and error that if it's less than a certain amount, I mean, probably the bare minimum would be more like 45. These are, these are counting in uh, CD frames, by the way. Um, what will happen is when you first put a CD... Uh, yeah, for those of you who still know what that is, uh, into a player, what happens is the player reads the table of contents, and while it's reading the table of contents, it mutes, most CD players mute the output. Uh, most car CD players will do this. Um, and then what'll, what'll happen is if that pause uh, that is, um, is too short, then... Uh, You'll, it'll actually clip the first note of the music when it's unmuting after reading the table of contents. So I hope that was, I hope I made that clear. Basically what'll happen is the first time you put the CD in and want it to play, the first song, it will clip the first note. And I've seen this happen on many, many quote unquote professional CDs. Um, if you make you know, if you make it a higher number, again, I normally go for over 50 uh, frames, then you avoid that problem. Then even, and even on the first play, it won't clip the first note. And it's worth mentioning that this only happens when you first put the CD in because it's reading the table of contents. Once the CD is in there, you can skip from song to song and it will, you know, it won't mute because it's not reading the table of contents again. So you won't ever have that problem again. But still, you know, you get a you get a new CD and you put in the player. The last thing you want is to have uh, the first note clipped. So um, yeah, it's it's a point. It's worth mentioning. Um, and you'll you'll look like you really know what you're doing if you take care of that. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, 
what'll happen is that also will automatically insert gap lengths into uh, your project. It'll put in your end marks, your start marks, and your and like whatever your default gap length is. Uh, I will normally then go through it and listen and adjust the gap lengths to something that feels good. Uh, you know, if there's a long fade out, then you want usually you want a shorter gap length. You know, um, things like that. Uh, what's important if you're you know, if you haven't done this a lot of this is um, if you want to play a fair amount of the ending to get a real sense of how long that gap is. If you just play the very end, it'll feel longer than if you were listening to the whole song. So just something to keep in mind. But, um, you know, <laughs> in today's world, uh, you know, the, I, the number of people that are actually going to listen to something on a CD at all, much less in order, just letting it roll, are probably very, very small percent. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's it's not the biggest deal in the world, but, you know, that's just, it's, you want to make it right just in case. And then, um, so uh, anyway, um, just to show you a little bit of what I've been dealing with because of these songs. Well, okay, first of all, the structure of WaveLab. Again, I went through this on my old video, but let's just recap a little bit. So WaveLab has these two tabs here and one is the master section and this does not save with the project you can save presets but it does not save with the project so uh, it didn't take me very long to just i mean you can put plugins on this but it didn't take me very long to just set it up in a way where i didn't need to change it you know for most things so uh you know they have a few things built in like there's a resampling section here built in and basically you know any project you're doing where the files are you know uh, have a higher sampling rate than 44k uh if you're outputting for cd you need to knock it down to 44k so they have that just like hardwired in and you can turn it on and off and you can tell it a different sample rate if you want to but mine's i pretty much have that on all the time um, now WaveLab has a whole bunch of really great analysis tools, um, but they also, uh, Steinberg makes this plugin called Supervision, which is also available, sorry about my thumb, uh, also available in Cubase and Nuendo. And it's amazing. It's just every kind of, um, analysis you could possibly want. So you can, and, and you can just keep adding more and more windows to analyze with, um, and then change what kind of analysis you want so like right now for whatever reason i have both of these on bar graph but you know um so let's say like i want to well this is one okay so again left and right in the bar graph so let's add one so boom all of a sudden you know it defaults to uh level with true peak right but let's say i don't want that here are all the choices you can have. It's just a great tool. You know, you can have, you can do phase, you can do spectrum curve, spectrum bar. All right, so that's spectrum bar. We can have spectrum curve going along with it. And if you hover over it, you'll see frequencies. It's incredibly useful. Um, and, uh, and you can add, you know, you can add on the side. You can just keep adding. You can make as many as you want. <laughs> so really, really cool plugin. Uh, so I'll usually keep leave that uh, on the on the master section here. And then the, finally, they have hard dedicated um, dithering because uh, if you're working in, you know, your original files are almost definitely going to be higher than 16 bit, and you you want to output at 16 bit for CD. So uh, again, uh, WaveLab has a dither built in. Um, this, uh, this dither, the Lin dither, um, exists in Cubase and Nuendo, but they have a few more parameters, uh, choices in noise shaping and whatnot, and dither type uh, in WaveLab that aren't in the other DAWs. So it's a little more full-featured in that way. It's nice. 
Um, okay, so that's the master section. And again, I try not to touch that. I try not to change that uh, because it doesn't save with the project. Now on the inspector section, this gets a little weird and complicated. So there's an output bus, which is basically the master section. It's just like, before, it's the master before the master. Um, again, like I try not to touch that too much if I don't have to. I like to, like I may have tracks that need different master bus settings, you know, different compression settings or whatever. Um, so, uh, I, and for that, I will just create more than one track. Now, as it happened, as you can see, I set up a second track here, thinking that I was going to need to do that. And that, that could be for anything. It could be because some songs are way quiet and some are way loud. It could be for, you know, um, different arrangements. It might, like if you have an album that has, you know, one power ballad and the rest of them are all, you know, um, you know, faster songs, whatever the differences might be, you know, you can have a second track and, and in that case, you would go to the track tab and then whatever you have selected will show you what plugins you've assigned to it. Now, in this case, I didn't use that second track, so there's nothing on it. But if I click on this track, boom, you see the plugins that I selected. Now, um, and also it's nice, there's like a built-in phase scope here. But so let's take a look at what I did for uh, my master bus. So starting off, I don't always do this, but I wanted um, I wanted a virtual tape machine. I wanted some uh, tape simulation for this particular album. And uh, uh, weirdly, um, so WaveLab has gone, like I'm on an Apple Silicon computer. I'm on a, a Mac, a Studio Mac, and I'm running, um, you know, uh, well, I think what happened was, so WaveLab is Apple Silicon compatible, but, but that's not even the issue. WaveLab um, just decided to uh, just cut off all plugins that were not VST3, which the Apple Silicon versions of Cubase and Nuendo did as well. So when you run Cubase or, nu or Nuendo in Silicon mode, you don't see any VST2 plugins, you only see VST3. Now the difference is for Nuendo and Cubase, you have the option of running them in Rosetta mode. Um, that may exist for WaveLab as well. I don't know, I, but the last update I did for WaveLab, all of a sudden it wouldn't run VST2. <laughs> so um, I've lost my VST2 plugins in WaveLab. Um, and uh, what unfortunately that means is I lose basically all my UAD to DSP plugins. Um, you know, those, uh, you know, UAD, you know, Universal Audio, just hasn't seen fit to update those DSP plugins to VST3. And my theory is that it's an incompatibility with the side chaining abilities of VST3 and their DSP under the hood. But because uh, VST3 has been out for years and they never updated it. So, um, so that's a bit of a problem. Their Spark plugins, their native plugins are VST3 compatible. And those do work here, but unfortunately they, don't, they only make about 20 of them. And you know, the ones that I would want for mastering uh, they don't. So, um, so unfortunately, the uh, you know, like uh, normally, I would use their their um, for tape simulation. I would use their Ampex um, plugin, but I, I can't right now. So it sent me looking for a different solution for that, um, and I had happened to have the Slate uh, virtual tape machine. And you know what? This is one of those happy moments where. You know, I don't, Slate's not usually my first go-to for anything really, but um, but I do have their um, subscription package. And I gotta say, uh, I love this plugin. I think it's great. Um, you know, it's it's subtle and, and it's got, it just has a really nice sound. Uh, and 
I, I haven't a beat it directly with uh, the Ampex uh, UAD plugin, but I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm running it and, um, you know, it just feels really good. So that's the first thing I'm hitting. Uh, normally when you do uh, tape sims, you want that to be, you know, pre other process. You know, you want that to be the first thing on, if on a, at least on a mix bus, on a master bus. Um, and then this actually is, it's pretty interesting. Uh, the next plugin I'm running is a brand new one. Um, plugin Alliance just released this. It's their uh, Amec mastering compressor. And I know um, the dude at White Sea Studio did a video on this. It's um, it's a daunting uh, plugin. It, it just has a unique way of addressing um, you know transients and timing uh, and peaks. But you know it's like anything else. You dive in and you get your hands dirty, and it's a really really nice plugin. It's really good. Um, just the, the body and the depth of the sound is really nice. This is, you know, the latest, greatest, you know, cutting edge programming. And it's just, you know, the, you know, there's so many, I mean, beyond all the, all these controls that, you know, you have to sort of wrap your head around. Um, there's also all this very specific stuff in terms of, um, the side chain, uh, influencing. So you can at the same time, you know, uh, filter out the detector circuit from, you know, the sub frequencies and essentially do DSing. And it's really, it's amazing. It's a, it's a really great solution. And, you know, there's a stereo width. Um, there's, there's just a lot, there's a mono maker. Um, there's the Plugin Alliance TMT technology, which I'm a little iffy about. I don't really, I'm not sure that really does anything that I need, but, um, but at any rate, it's a fantastic plugin. It really is. And I highly recommend it. You know, if you have, uh, look at those peaks. If you have um, a Plugin Alliance subscription, uh, I know this is included in the mega bundle and probably mix and master bundle um but jump on it and and you know you'll yeah you know, you'll, you'll be happy that you did so i'm running that and then my final hit always always is <laughs> the true peak uh true peak limiter and this is you know i've talked about this many times it's just a fantastic plug and this is also plug-in alliance brainworks um and you know just great metering um you can see your input levels uh, your gain reduction, you can, you see your measured LUFs, um, dynamic range, and there's all kinds of nice stuff. Like there's, a, they have a proprietary little bass boost there. Um, and then there's even like some tone control stuff, which uh, I don't really use too much, but a little more high pass filtering, 22 Hertz is nice after it's gone through some of that processing. You can also, um, you can, you can, unlink uh the, the channels that can be fun i don't like to do that usually at the end of the processing so i generally go for 100 there but you can also uh there's a mix knob uh for the limiter so i like giving it a little bit of relief there um and yeah in general it's a great plugin so that's that's the master chain the tape uh sim the mastering compressor and the True Peak, and uh, here I'll give you. I know we're not we're listening on the phone, but here let me see if I can give you a. And that, so I can bypass here. Woo! Right. Now, obviously that's not level matched. I'll turn this up here. Maybe I've just been here too many times in my safe little room in the back of my mind. Just great um, energy injected from the tape and the, and the mastering compressor. I don't have to breathe. Measure the 
And that's what you want. You, know, like you don't want to be slamming anything down if you can avoid it and mastering. And notice I'm not like killing my levels here. But one thing that's interesting, I mean, it's it's nice to see the LUFs in the in the uh, peak meter, but this is your the in the inner levels are your averages, and you can see like I'm still like consistently yeah hitting negative ten and a little higher dBFS. That's pretty hot for a nice quiet acoustic tune, um, and so. You know, the idea is like I, I can get this pretty hot without slamming anything that much if, if you're careful. So let's start looking at uh, some of the channel settings. So the way this works is that was the track setting, the stuff that we just looked at. Then there's the clip setting and every song can have its own. So the one we're looking at now, now this is what I've done for a lot of my, uh, a lot of these songs, which is I'm using BX Digital version three. This is one of Plugin Alliance's oldest plugins. Um, Dirk, who started Plugin Alliance, I believe he made the hardware version of this, and then he started his foray into software by making the emulation here. Um, and it's an amazing plugin. Um, it doesn't have all of the options of Fab Filter and some others. But the fact that it was designed from the ground up to be MS, where you've got your mono section, you know, your middle section here and your side section there. Um, I mean, it's been that way since the beginning, since its first version. Um, and some of the nice things they've added is, like there's a dynamic EQ frequency for the middle and another one for the side. You can do them differently. Um, that's nice. Uh, and, Otherwise, uh, the other thing I really appreciate about it is, um, whoops, that's me leaning on the keyboard, uh, is it has auto listen, auto solo on the frequencies, which a lot of plugins do, but it's like sometimes you have to press a button to do it. I really appreciate the auto-ness of it. Like you just, the minute you grab a frequency, it starts soloing. And that's a great way to, you know, find issues without having to, uh, you know, all, if you're sweeping, all you have to do is sweep the frequency. You don't have to, you don't have to go crank up the game. Like, you know, you can just sweep that way. It's just very fast, very intuitive. Um, there's also a stereo width here and high pass, low pass separately for the sides and the middle. So this is an ideal plugin for a situation like this, where almost all of the arrangements on this album are vocals in the middle and guitars on the sides, which really adds a lot of flexibility in mastering. So like, you know, a certain song might have seemed like a good balance in the mix, but you get it up against the other songs on the album and it's like, oh, the vocal's a little too loud, you know? Instead of having to put the mix back up and everything, you, you, you might be able to address it with an MS equalizer. Um, also, just there may be, uh, you know, sonic things, like maybe only the vocal has an issue, like in the mid-range that, that you don't wanna, or you wanna pull a frequency, but you don't wanna pull it out of the guitars on the sides. Yeah, this is what this is perfect for. So what I've done is like, I've gone up, I've done a pass with this equalizer. And then I also am running Fab Filter, which Fab Filter is also incredibly flexible. I mean, Fab Filter, you can take any one of these nodes and make them mid or side or stereo. Um, and you can see I've done that here. So there's this mid range dip only in the middle. Um, and I don't know if there's any that are only on the sides in this, but uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And the rest of these were stereo. But, um, you know, it's just a different way of working it. And uh, it's nice to have the flexibility to do both. I would also just point out that and maybe you saw this when I had the other equalizer up, that these are, this is, these are mastering amounts of change. So if this is, if this line is, plus three and that's negative three you can see how little i'm actually doing you know i mean 
that's a lot for mastering right there that one that dip in the mid-range um, and you can change your scale here so now now you see it in single decibel increments <laughs> that's a fun song but you know a little goes a long long way in mastering so uh you know with it, with each song uh it's been interesting the one thing that was uh a little different and unique was on this album was there was one song that you know the artist felt and i totally agreed that it was a little too dry and so they wanted to add a little reverb in mastering um and you know it's a little it's a little clunky but i just i just went ahead and i did it here in the in the clip setup and i made it the last plugin and again you know i my uh choices were a little limited there's a lot of uad reverbs that i like a lot but again this was a funny situation where it forced me to use something i might not have grabbed you know normally on my own and i was really happy so on this song i ended up going for the abbey road uh plate reverb and i'm thrilled with it you know um now again mastering you know i didn't want i hardly wanted any i did a first pass of this with the dry wet on three <laughs> percent and, and um you would think that would be nothing but it was a little too much um so i i dialed it back to two um and this song had a few other uh things i wanted to address the end result i think came out great uh here a little. You know, it ended up really nicely balanced, really warm. Um, how we got there was interesting. So um, you may have seen uh, Warren Hewitt uh, talk about this plugin. Uh, so this is um, the Waves MV2, and it's basically uh, a bottom-up, you know, compressor, and. Um, now again, this is one. This is a function um, I've done in the past using uh, the Precision Maximizer plugin from UAD. But this is essentially the same thing. And what I'll do with this um, is, I, Wave Lab is really cool in that every plugin in here you can assign to uh, stereo, mid side, left, right, mid side alone, blah, 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 blah. So what I'll do is I'll put a maximizer on the sides alone. And it just, it gives this really warm lift on the sides that it's sort of like, I know you may have experienced when you, when you push a mix against uh, a brick wall limiter and and you hear the information on the sides, you know, get relatively louder because you're smashing the loudest part, which was the middle against a ceiling. And, and there's sort of, you know, there's, there's, there's a nice quality to hearing the sides come up, but you're paying for that by squashing the middle. And what this does is it lets you get everything you loved about the sides getting warmer and bigger without any of any of the price to pay yeah, without damaging the middle at all so it's a great tool it's it's also a great way to address a mix where you feel the middle's too loud and that the sides aren't loud enough which was the case here and again very subtle um i'm also hitting it with um some multi-band compression and I like to be very, very careful about that. Um, I'll reference him again. My buddy Warren Hewitt will, will, likes to warn a lot about the evils of multiband compression. But if you do it very carefully and very responsibly, you can get a great result. And then back to the good old, uh, you know, BX Digital V3. Um, and we left that song, so we're not singing well. But... Um, yeah, and again, some more MSEQ. 
but the end result was amazing. And it's just really, uh, here, if I, if I bypass this whole chain. Okay, so that's on, that's engaged. That may be too subtle for an iPhone mic, but um, you know the dimension and the warmth on the sides that comes up, um, you know, really uh, you know, adding a lot. And for the reverb, I really only wanted it to catch on the louder vocal phrases anyway. So I think this was good. Uh, I haven't gotten feedback from the artist yet. They may say give us more reverb, and then you know I'll bump it up one. But um, you know, it, it, it's very satisfying. It, it took a little bit of work, but um, that song really came out nice. And, you know, I, I, for me, uh, my I'm not ashamed to admit my acid test is my car. Like, yeah, you, know, um, you know, I love my whole setup here, but, you know, my car is where I listen recreationally. It's and, and that's where I really, really know what, you know, consumer music you know, what it should sound like on a consumer system. So I've already run this through there and, and taken my own notes. And, um, and you know, this song came out really nice. Uh, my only note was a little too much reverb. But um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, I wish this had been in a YouTube live session. <laughs> I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. It's just a weird interface. Uh, I have to, it doesn't work the way... Uh, I guess the way uh, Instagram live works. Um, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll get it going. There was some weird uh, thing anyway about um, capping 25 viewers uh, at plus subscribers until I have a thousand subscribers. And, you know, we're, we're actually getting pretty close to that. Uh, you guys have been great. Uh, and do, please, if, you, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, we're getting close to a thousand and I'd really like to open up whatever tools YouTube will make available at that point. But um, yeah, uh, please uh, comment and uh, share your thoughts. Uh, you know, um, the last mastering video did okay, but there's a lot of, you know, mastering's a blast. It's a lot of fun. Um, and um you know i actually uh started my well with my first studio that i built um i was i was mastering quite a bit there it turned out to be like my main business um i had done a lot of work in other studios before that but um it's a unique perspective like listening to done mixes and then seeing what else they need and how they can be improved um it's a different head altogether and it's fun it's a lot of fun so um yeah i would encourage people to dive in and also if anybody has been on the fence about whether you know wave lab is worth the investment you know if you're not doing a lot of mastering it certainly isn't but if you want to get into mastering if you want to do a fair amount of it it's fantastic and i really i really love it um, it's a little quirky. It takes, there's a learning curve for sure. Um, kind of like Pro Tools insofar as, uh, it's been around a long, long time and there are some interface GUI issues that I think are legacy that were either too difficult to change or, you know, uh, the guy that, that designed WaveLab who eventually sold it to Steinberg is still, you know, running it basically. He's still, he's still making it. And um, I don't know, maybe he's just attached to some of these GUI things, but um, it's getting better and better every, you know, every iteration. And, um, and it's, it's, I think it's by far the best solution um, for, for mastering that I'm aware of. Uh, and it's just very friendly, you know, things like being able to bump any plugin into MS, you know, like, like I was showing, like, that's amazing. I wish every DAW had that, you know, I mean, they're starting to make, you know, certain plugins are starting to offer that, but it'd be, it's just so great having it in the DAW. So, you know, it could be your run of the mill average plugin makes no difference. You can still do MS if you want to. It's fantastic. So, um, all right, take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.